through patience. That Allah loves him as for those who have praised the melancholy and have lauded its many virtues while claiming that our religion encourages it, then they are very mistaken. In fact, every text from Revelation that touches upon sadness forbids it and orders its opposite, namely, that, he, that we should be content with the mercy and blessings of Allah and happy with that which has been sent with the messenger of Allah. Blessings and peace be upon him. Those who incline towards extremes in, ex in asceticism, asceticism also relate the following narration. If Allah loves one of his slaves, he makes that slave's heart that, a, that of a weeper. And if he hates one of his slaves, then he places a flute in his heart, thus making him constantly light and happy. First, we must note that this is an Israelite tradition, which is claimed to be found in the Torah. Nevertheless, it does have a correct meaning, since truly the believer feels grief due to his sins, and the evildoer is ever playful and frivolous, light and joyful. So if the hearts of the faithful grieve, then it is only due to, due to opportunities lost in terms of righteous deeds or because of sins committed. This is contrary to the sadness of the evildoers, whose grief is caused by losing out on physical pleasure or worldly benefit. Their yearnings, anxieties and sadness are always for these ends and for nothing else. In this verse, Allah says of his prophet Israel, Israel, and he lost his sight because of the sorrow that he was suppressing. Here we are informed of his grief over losing his beloved son. Simply informing about something does not in itself signify either approval or disapproval of that thing. The fact is that we, we have been ordered to seek refuge from sadness, as it is a heavy cloud that hangs, that hangs above its victim and is a barrier that prevents one from advancing to higher aims. Take a moment to reflect. There is no doubt that sadness is a trial and a hardship and is in some ways similar to sickness. However, it is not a stage level or condition that the pious should actively seek out. You are required to seek the means of happiness and peace, to ask Allah to grant you a good life, one that gives you a clear conscience and a mind at peace. The achievement of this is an, an, an early reward, a point that is underscored by the saying of some. In this world is a paradise, and whoever does not enter it shall not enter the paradise of the hereafter. And we ask Allah to open our hearts to the light of faith, to guide our hearts to his straight path, and to save us from a miserable and wretched life. Take a moment to reflect let us make these supplications, their purpose being to eliminate hardship, anxiety, and grief. There is none worthy of worship except Allah, the ever forbearing, the most great. There is none worthy of worship except Allah, the Lord of the tremendous throne. There is none worthy of worship except Allah, the Lord of the heavens, the Lord of the earth, and the Lord of the noble throne. O ever living, and O one who sustains and protects one that uh, all that exists. There is none worthy of worship except you, and by your mercy do we seek your aid. O oh Allah, your mercy do I hope for. So do not leave me to myself, not even for the blinking of an eye. And make well for me all of my affairs. There is none worthy of worship except you. I see forgiveness from Allah, none is worthy, none is worthy of worship except 
him he is the ever living and the one who sustains and protects all that exists and I turn to him in repentance there is none worthy of worship except you and how perfect you are verily I was among the wrongdoers O oh Allah verily I am your slave the son of your slaves my forelock is in your hand your order concerning me will be executed. And just is your judgment upon me. I ask of you by all of your names that you have named yourself with, have revealed in your book, have taught to one of your creation, or is in your knowledge only from the matters of the unseen. Make the Quran the spring of my heart, the light of my chest, the removal of my sadness, and the purge of my anxiety. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from anxiety and grief, from inability and laziness, from avarice and cowardice, from being engrossed by death, and from being overpowered by men. Allah alone is sufficient for us, and he is the best disposer of affairs for us. Smile laughing moderately can act as a cure or as therapy for depression and sadness it has a strong influence on keeping the soul light and the heart clear abu dharma may allah be pleased with him said i make it a practice to laugh in order to give rest and comfort to my heart and the noblest of people would laugh sometimes until his molars became vis visible. Laughing is an eff efficacious way to achieve comfort and light heartedness, but keep in mind that, as in other things, you should not be immoderate. The Prophet, blessings and peace be upon him, said, Do not laugh excessively, for verily excessive laughter kills the heart. What is called for is moderation smile and if you smile in the face of your brother then that is a form of charity so he Suleiman smiled amused by her speech also when he when you laugh you should not do so in a mocking or jeering fashion but when he came to them with our ayat proves evidences verses lesson size revelations behold they laughed at them among the pleasures of paradise will be laughter but this day, the day of resurrection, those who believe will laugh at the disbelievers. The Arabs would hold in high esteem a person who has, was known. For his smile and laughter, they believed this to be a sign of a generous personality and of a person who has a noble disposition and a clear mind. The truth is that the principles of Islam are based on moderation and on good measure, whether it is in matters of belief, worship, manners, or conduct. Islam does not condone a rigid, frowning expression, nor does it condone a constant, playful giddiness. Rather, what it does promote is seriousness when it is called for, and a reasonable level of light-heartedness. When it is called for, bearing a gloomy mien and a frowning countenance, and are marks of a lowly character, a troubled nature, and hot-headedness. And then he frowned, and he looked in a bad-tempered way. The Prophet, blessings and peace be upon him, said, Do not disparage, underestimate any good deed, no matter how small it is, even if that deed was to meet your brother with a friendly countenance ahmad Abin said in his book fade al-khatif